I'm sitting on the toilet. I'm drinking wine out of a goblet, recording a role-playing video. How are my life goals going? I think I'm right on track. Hey everybody, John O'Connor here once again, your favorite storyteller. <sighs> I've been away yet again, sorry, it happens. Slow internet, demanding hours at work, but I wanted to make a video. I was recently asked a question that has been stirring in my head, festering, to the point where I've actually had to take time, to waste time, to think about it. And the question that was raised to me was, should D&D, &D, Pathfinder, be a medieval setting? Well, if you look at your history, your first edition, your second edition, the answer aims more toward yes. Third edition moving forward, it becomes something else altogether. It becomes its own fantasy setting. So, this is the conundrum where we walk into. The roots of D&D &D are based in a Tolkienish world with a medieval backdrop. Whereas current fantasy is its own thing. One quick look and you assume, oh, that's medieval. But it's really not. It's its own little thing. The, the biggest problem that we have here is that settings like Faerun may have even started out a little medieval, but they've evolved into their own thing because they've been allowed to grow and expand. Uh, some people might not realize this, that D&D &D basic lore is always evolving from one generation to the next, or one edition to the next. And that can cause some problems, because although the background might have been medieval to start with, something too important to always remember is the evolution of their world and the evolution of our world may be parallel at some points, but they're always going to branch differently because they have the aid of magic. Whereas we invented electricity, they have alchemic items. We built handguns, they made wands hold fourth level spells. So these are the trade-offs you've got to deal with. Is... Is D&D medieval anymore? No. Is that a bad thing? Depends on where you fall on the fence there. I don't have an answer for you. I'm not here to sell you on an idea, I'm here to sell you on my ideas. And my idea is, you don't like what you're playing? Build your own campaign. Setting. Build your own campaign setting. That's what I'm getting at here. But the problem with that is, is it takes time, energy, and effort. So, the issue, biggest issue, if you're using a pre-existing setting and the creators of the setting just go, fuck off, let's have a gunslinger class, you're a little SOL, because that exists in that pre-existing world that you play in. The control you do have, and you always will have, and if you players respect you, they, they just won't acknowledge the gunslinger, is that... You can just tell your players, I would prefer if you didn't play the gunslinger. And in return, I will not have a gunslinger enemy, ally, legend, or anything of the sort. I think people get too lost on the idea that this is a campaign setting, that this is a fantasy world created by somebody else, and we have to play it as true as true can be. Although a good idea, it kind of takes away from the freedom of the DM. If you want to say that Elminster was a raging lunatic rapist, who's to say he wasn't? It's your campaign. You know, play around with it. The source books are just a guideline. If you want to say that Dritz has a drinking problem, screw it. Dritz had a drinking problem. That's your prerogative. Does it make you correct? 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 Correct. Create is a dumb word, because it's not a word at all. Does it correct? Mmm, debatable. Are you playing with Salvador? Then no, no, you are completely wrong. Salvador is right. Are you playing with Greenwood? 
Uh, well, Greenwood might have a good laugh at it, but yeah, you're still wrong. Are you playing with Dave and Steve, who haven't read the books as well as you have? Well, then fuck it, you're correct. Are you playing with somebody who is immersed, immensely immersed in the mythology? You're still right, you're the DM. They're not the creator of the character. I think people get caught up too much on the fact of what kind of setting D&D and Pathfinder have become, and forget the simple fact that these are just guidelines that the DM, GM, flame tender, storyteller, whatever you call the person in charge who gets to play every other character that isn't your character, these are, these are guidelines. My world? I use standard SRD for a lot of things. Problem is, I don't believe in dinosaurs. And I don't mean I don't believe in dinosaurs because Jesus created man, no, no, no. I don't believe in dinosaurs in the mythology of my world. I think it ruins the fantasy for me. If it doesn't ruin the fantasy for you, you can have your halfling riding on a raptor. Little cowboy hat. Little sombrero. Little scarf. Make him a gunslinger. Make the raptor an awakened creature. You know, you got a whole Saturday morning cartoon there. But we'll talk about that another day. What I'm getting at, though, is you can make the mythology, the lore, the comings and goings of the average day, what you would like it to be, not what the book says it is. My world. Drow are pitied. They were a slave race for many years. Why were they a slave race? Because they used to be Sun Elves who fought other Sun Elves. They lost a war. Their punishment was being sent underground, treated like second-class citizens. But that's how I interpret Drow. That's not how you have to interpret Drow. On that point, if you want to be that asshole and go, they're not Drow, they're Drow. If it's your campaign night and I'm a guest, I would be forced to call them Drow. Wouldn't like it. I would make an argument about it. But it is your decision. They'd have to be called Drow. Same thing with Tifling and Tiefling, Melee and Melee. When it is your campaign night and you are the one in charge, you get to make the rules within reason. You don't get to say that paladins automatically know fly at first level. You don't get to say monks catch bullets with their teeth. But you get to say, these are the things I'm comfortable with, these are the things I'm not comfortable with. This is something we've grown comfortable talking about with much more mature content. Rape, incest, blatant murder. But it's something that we, we shy away from when it comes to what we are comfortable with seeing mechanically. Well, the book says I can play a monk. Well, I say you can't. I'll tell you right now. I have a player who's been wanting to play a druid for quite a while, and I keep telling him no, because I don't like how powerful the druid is. Same thing with the monk. If there was more limitations on these character classes, I'd be okay with it. Have I tweaked with them? Have I worked with them? Yes. Did I like it still? Not really. I love the idea of these classes. I don't like the execution. Why? Well, because I think the monk should have been in an oriental campaign setting. And I think the druid should have been toned down just a bit. But these are my opinions for my campaign nights. How you feel about it is how you feel about it. And I don't have any right to argue with you if I'm sitting at your table. This is, a, this is something we, we, we forget. When a DM invites you to their table, you have to throw away the rules that you are comfortable with, the ideas that you are comfortable with, and you have to accept the fact that the DM has their own beliefs and ideals that they are more comfortable with.